Hey everybody, it's me, Shaw360, and this is my 2018 K-pop album tag. This is a tag that was started by Randomly 2011, and it's been somewhat of a tradition in the K-pop unboxing community for quite a while. And I didn't do it in 2016 because I was on hiatus, and I didn't do it in 2017 because honestly I was really messed up at the end of that year. But in 2018, I'm here, and I am so glad to be doing this because... At the beginning of the year, I was very pessimistic about 2018. I didn't think that I was going to relate to a lot of the new music that was coming out because I didn't in 2017. And I didn't think I was going to find a lot that I wanted to put my money behind. But after going through all the list of comebacks and looking at everything I owned, I'm shocked how much stuff I found to love in 2018 and it really gives me hope for the future of K-pop. So even though I'm going to answer the questions in the tag, I wanted to show you guys everything that I bought that came out in 2018 because I wanted you to see just how much quality content was out there for people who were looking for it. Um, and there are a couple of things that are missing from the table that I just wanted to let you guys know about. Um, Simon Dominic's Dark Room, I did buy, but it's still on the table because it's in my car. Also, Onu's Voice, I haven't received it in the mail yet, so that's why I'm not showing it today. And also, BTS's Fake Love Slash Airplane Part 2, I'm just being lazy, and it's somewhere around here, but I can't find it, so sorry about that, y'all. So let's start with my babies. First, we got Shiny's Story Light Episode 3, Episode 2, Episode 1, and then the kind of compilation album epilogue. We have Junghyun's Poet Artist. We have Key's Face. And then right here is where I would be putting Onu's voice, but like I said, I don't have it yet. Um, and then we have, lastly, from The Shiny Camp, Taemin's first full album in Japan. Next pile, we have Blackpink's Square Up, Treasure by ATs, Hashtag Cookie Jar by Red Velvet, BTS's Face Yourself, Japanese full-length album, Say's Classic, Ji Young's Fountain, Zion T's ZZZ, Crush's Wanderlost, Your Dog Loves You by Cold, Sun and Moon by Sun Kim, Science Fiction Music by Geary Boy, Really Bad Boy by Red Velvet, Wave by Cold, and Bad Boy, The Perfect Red Velvet Repackage. Next pile, we have Yellow Flower by Mama Moo, Present You by GOT7, One Shot Two Shot by BOA, Luna's Plus Plus, Luna Subunit YYXY, NCT 2018's Empathy, Hayes' Wish and Wind, Bix's Ode to Vix, GOT7's Eyes on You, TVXQ's New Chapter Number One The Chance of Love, Momo Land's Third Album Great featuring Boom Boom. Monster X's Are You There? G Idol I Am. Heart by Xinhua. Shinies from Now On. Block B's Remontage. Icon's Return. Red Velvet Summer Magic. Last Pile Positive by Pentagon. Canvas by Leo. GWSN's Girls in the Park, A Park in the Night. Exos Don't Mess Up My Tempo. So Use Refresh. Sunny's Warning, Super Junior's Replay, Love Yourself Tear, Love Yourself Answer, and Taeyeon's Something New. Sorry about him to tell me, y'all. Okay, so now let's answer some questions. All right, so question number one, favorite K-pop album of 2018. So... I don't normally like to bend the rules and pick more than one album, but all of these albums are my favorite album for different reasons. And because of that, it felt like comparing apples to oranges. Yeah, they're all fruits, but they have totally different flavor profiles. So I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of why all of these albums were my favorite album of the year. So let's start with Bad Boy by Red Velvet, the Perfect Red Velvet repackage. Um, the Perfect Red Velvet was probably my favorite girl group album of 2017. I thought it was wonderful. I did not know that it could be improved upon. And then this bad boy came out. Get it? This bad boy? Ha. 
Anyway, I thought it was an excellent repackage. I thought that the concept for it was very strong. I thought Bad Boy is probably one of Red Velvet's best comeback title songs ever. I thought that the songs that were included for the repackage were pretty good. And overall, I just think this is probably their strongest release in their entire discography. And there's a lot of people who would debate me on that. I would say that The Red is their best album. Uh, For me, it is definitely Bad Boy The Repackage. It has everything going for it. And I was very glad to see them come out with this. And it renewed my faith in Red Velvet. Not that it had been waning, but I was wondering, like, what is it about them that keeps bringing me back to them, that keeps making them a favorite? And this album just kind of summed it all up in a very nice and neat package for me. Then we have this, which is EXO's Don't Mess Up My Tempo. Now, I bought this copy not even thinking, oh yeah, they're going to do a repackage. So I haven't listened to the Love Shot repackage. I've listened to the single, but I haven't listened for any additional songs. But Don't Mess Up My Tempo, this was an album that I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it when it first came out because I was kind of disappointed with the war. But I love Don't Mess Up My Tempo, and I love it because it sounds the most like the K-pop that I'm used to hearing. And it's funny to say that because this isn't necessarily an old-fashioned sounding album. It just sounds like K-pop, and that's the best way I can put the sound. So if there was a category for like best traditional K-pop album, definitely Don't Mess Up My Tempo would win. And On the sheer strength of the song Gravity alone, I have to give this 10 out of 10 would recommend because it's just, it is K-pop. It really is and I enjoyed it thoroughly and it reminded me of why I care about EXO so much and why I kept up with their discography because when EXO does it right, it's hard to touch them because they just do it so, so well. So really glad that this came out this year. Next, we have this, which is Love Yourself by BTS. This is Answer. So this is kind of a compilation of everything they put out, both at the end of 2017 and in 2018. This is an album that I have listened to over and over and over and over again in one form or another, whether it was listening to the songs on this album when they appeared on Tear, on Her, or just listening to this album as a whole once it came out. Hours of enjoyment. Also, BTS was one of the concerts I went to this year. So this album takes on a very different meaning for me because I've seen these songs performed live. And so there's just another layer of involvement and care involved with that. Um, And it was so nice to see BTS kind of break the Psy curse in a lot of ways. I felt like prior to BTS's big appearance in America and the attention they received, K-pop for most people meant Gangnam style. And it was a joke. And even though BTS is very fetishized and they're treated very niche, at the end of the day, I don't think people can say that the music is a joke. It's real music made to be listened and considered seriously. And people can't deny that. They just can't. So for that reason, this album definitely is a standout for the year and something that deserves the attention that it's received. And while this is not the version that is Grammy nominated, it is awesome that a K-pop album is being considered for packaging of the year because it's something that us as K-pop and Bokters have known for forever. But to finally see someone in that realm see it as well it's it's amazing it's amazing i'm really really proud of them i'm proud of k-pop um next we have this which is shiny's epilogue and it's the comeback of the year in terms of coming back from tragedy and being victorious And not victorious and like, oh, we beat them, but victorious and like, we conquered our own fears and we conquered the public's doubts and we were able to come back and show them that nothing is broken here. It's different for sure. It'll never be the same, but nothing's broken here. 
And I think that's probably the strongest statement that anyone has made in K-pop this year. Just by existing, this was a strong statement. And it deserves the attention I'm giving it now. And it deserves a listen if you haven't listened to the B-sides. If you've only listened to the title tracks, please listen to the B-sides, especially the song Lock You Down. It is a song that it wraps up my heart. So please check it out. And then lastly, we have this, which is Jung Yoon's poet artist. Um, It is Jung Yoon, you know, it is the last gift he ever gave us. Um, It is an album that the proceeds went to charity. It is a beautifully composed and performed album. And it is an album that if the events of December 18th had not taken place would probably still be on my end of year list because it is a brilliant, brilliant release and it deserves to be remembered as that, not just as his last release. Um, There are so many great songs on here. Sentimental is a really great song. Shining, of course, is a beautiful and heartbreaking but yet energetic and fun song um take the dive oh my gosh there's just so much good on here there's so much good there's so many influences everything that Jung Yun ever loved in life he put pen to paper and wrote it and made it appear on this album and I highly encourage you to listen to it if you have not listened to the full album yet get on YouTube all the songs are there Give it a go. I know it's hard because grief is a thing, but I'm telling you, you are missing out if you're not exposing yourself to this because this is a gorgeous album and it deserves to be remembered as more than a memorial piece. So please, please check it out. So the next question was favorite photo book concept. And honestly, if timing was better, there would be three albums sitting here, but it would definitely be Jung Yun's poet artist, Key's face, and Ona's voice. And the reason why this was my favorite photo book concept is because plagiarism is a shawal thing. It's a shiny thing. And it was so beautiful to see that when Key came out with his first physical release, it was in the same style as Taemin's ace, Jung Yun's bass, Jung Yun's poet artist. And then for Onu to come out with a solo that we never thought he was going to give us and do voice in exactly the same packaging. It's just, it brings a smile to my face. Um, it's something that I cherish deeply and I'm so glad to see it. So just imagine that there's three here, but that was my favorite photo book concept this year. Next question was favorite packaging of the year. And this one was a tough one because honestly, It could have gone a lot of different ways for me, but I ended up picking these two because they both represent very different things. So Hayes' Wish and Wind, this is the limited edition. It's really hard to find right now. I was lucky to get it when it first came out. But this one I love because it has the lead single of the song is a song called Jenga, like the game, Jenga. And you can see kind of the tower here and how it's kind of shaky. Well, inside of this album, if you get all the stuff taken away from it, there is an actual Jenga game in the album. And I love commitment to concept. So for me, best packaging because it actually had a Jenga game in there and the title song was Jenga. Also, Oda Vix, I really, really love because it was a scented album and the title song was scented. And then it's also called Oda Vix, like a perfume. So when you bring all of that stuff together, you can't help but admire the commitment. But then again, Vix has always been about commitment to the concept. So this is not surprising output from them, but it deserves to be recognized for what it is. So definitely my top packaging of 2018. Next, we have my least favorite packaging of the year. And I almost picked Soyuz Refresh because I'm really getting sick of these plastic slipcovers. First of all, they get scratched to no end. 
they're not attractive and they never fit well so i just wanted to put that out there in case anybody's wondering quit doing the plastic slip covers no one likes them but the reason why i picked this as my least favorite packaging of the year is because this packaging does something that i find uber annoying and this is what they do and I've seen it before with other groups so they're not the first they won't be the last but I just want nobody to ever do this again first of all I hate blind packaging I hate the packaging where you buy the album and you don't know what cover you're going to get on the inside or you don't know what cd you're going to get on the inside because I know why companies do it they do it as a cash grab to get you to buy multiple copies hoping that you'll get your fave and I have never liked that and with there being seven members in GOT7, they are hoping that if you have a bias, you may be tempted to buy seven copies that you can get your bias. Don't like that. But the thing that is the ultimate, uh-uh, don't do this no more for me, the inside of this slipcover is a poster. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to me, you pay a lot of money for these CDs and being an international fan, not only am I paying money for the CD just because it costs money to, for the company to produce, but I have to pay international shipping. I am not about to tear apart my slip cover to get to your poster. It's not happening. Quit doing this shit. And it's something that has been done before. I remember, I think it was, um, New East, one of their albums, the Dust Jacket was a member. Um, I think that Sung Yu from Infinite may have done that before, where you open the slipcover for his, and it was a. It could be one of two or three different posters. I have never liked that. I will never like that. And it is the only thing that annoys me more than plastic slipcovers is the slipcover that you're supposed to rip apart. And it becomes something else. Um, the other thing that I find really annoying are albums that come in bags. But this year, I didn't have any albums that came in bags. So I didn't have those to judge. But yes, the slip cover that you're supposed to rip apart. Do not put things in my K-pop albums that you expect me to tear apart. I pay too much money for this stuff for me to rip it to shreds. That's not the game here. That's not what we're doing Please don't do this in 2019. Next is favorite rookie girl group. And I could have put Luna here. To be quite honest with you, Luna definitely could have been here. Partially because I feel like Luna, for me, has a really strong debut because of how much effort their company put in prior to their debut and making the public have knowledge of them. But I think... That's part of the reason why I didn't want to put them as the rookie of the year because honestly, I feel like I've known Luna for two years. And so it was hard to feel right about saying they were the rookie of the year when we've known them for so long. Whereas Idol came out of nowhere. Not only did they come out of nowhere and just all of a sudden here they are on the scene killing it like big bosses, but also this particular CD, if you guys have watched my channel, I didn't even mean to buy this CD. I bought like a huge bundle of girl albums from Japan on a Zen market haul. And this happened to be in the box. And I remember unboxing it at the time and saying, yeah, I'll give it a listen. And if I don't like it, I'll probably sell it. Gave it a listen, completely blown away. Now, there are a couple of songs here that aren't my fave, but overall, this was fantastic. Their follow-up single was fantastic. What they've done with KDA Stars, fantastic. I am looking forward to so much from Idol. The only thing that really kind of loses the bloom on the flower for me is the fact that they are with Cube. And Cube was one of the big villains in K-pop this year. So it's hard for me to feel encouraged about one of their groups when I have such hard feelings for the company. Um, but outside of that... This is an amazing debut and it just gives you so much kind of enthusiasm for what are they going to do next because they haven't had a misstep yet. So yeah, definitely my girl rookie group of the year. Rookie boy group of the year. This was a hard one for me up until last month because 
there weren't really any guy rookies that I felt a big kinship with. Um, there have been some good rookies that came out this year, though. I don't want it to seem like I hated everybody, but I'm just saying, like, none of them really stood out to me as, like, that's the one. Oh, that reminds me, there is an album missing from my year end that I didn't put out here. I have a Stray Kids album, but no, wait, that was the mixtape that came out in 2017, I believe, so maybe not. But, yeah, Stray Kids, I like them. I liked UNB from the Unit Television show. Like I said, there were a lot of guy groups that I had pleasant impressions of, but when it came to who I felt was the rookie of the year for 2018, it had to go to ATs. It had to go to ATs because I had a very visceral reaction to them when they debuted. I remember seeing everybody talking about ATs and talking about how much they liked them and how good Pirate King was. And I'm like, okay, well, let me give it a listen because, I mean, everybody has to be talking about them for a reason. People aren't popular in a bubble. And immediately upon the start of that video, I knew this was something different. And after watching the video, after watching the treasure video, it was just like, oh yeah, I, I've got to get into them. And the mini album is great. Twilight is great. Like it's just, they did such a good job on this thing. And I really look forward to seeing what's going to happen next for them. I'm worried because they're from a smaller company. So you never know how that's going to work out, but you know, Miracles happen every day. Look at G-Friend. So, you know, this may be the boy version of a G-Friend turnaround. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, definitely my boy rookies of the 2018 year. So this is one of the extra questions. And this question that I added was favorite female solo. And I bought a few female solo albums. And definitely if there was an album that would have beat this, it would have been Hyolan's mini album. But the thing is, Yolan didn't have a mini album this year. She just released Firebrand singles. But yeah, that's the only thing that would have beat Send Me's Warning. First of all, the packaging is gorgeous. Secondly, the title song is everything. I've had Get Away Out of My Face stuck in my head ever since it came out. Like, it's, some, it's a meme in my household. Whenever I want Stephanie to leave me alone, I'm like, get away out of my face. And it just, it is what it is. It's been stuck in her head several different times too. But I love this album. I love the fact that Sun Me left the Wonder Girls and just kicked ass right out the gate. Um, also, Yubin, if there was a physical for Yubin, I probably would have included that just kind of as a side note because I love Yubin's humans <laughs> I love you been single thank you very much um but yeah I have to say this right here this is like some next level boss bitch shit and so get into it if you can but yeah I love it I'm so glad that she came up with this album it's fantastic it is worth your money just the quality of the print alone is worth your money so for a favorite solo male I'm actually surprised I picked this. A lot of people probably would have thought I would have picked Jonghyun or I initially thought I was going to pick Crush's Wanderlust because I really liked Wanderlust a lot. It was very, very good. And I keep saying Lust and it's Lost. Sorry about that. He has an album called Wander Lost as well. It's, I'm getting tongue-tied here. I picked Zion T-Z-Z-Z because honestly... I didn't even expect to see this album this year. Um, back when Zion T was with Amoeba Culture, he didn't really put out albums too frequently. He did a lot of guest stars, but just his own albums, he didn't put a bunch of those out. And then when he joined YG, I'm like, okay, so we'll get an album from him like once every five years because nobody releases on a regular basis at YG. And then I don't know what happened if maybe YG heard the complaints was like, I'll show you, but because Zion T is on a different like subset of YG, I guess they encourage him to release things a bit more frequently and he released this album and this album is perfect. It, it really is. It is a perfect album. It sounds super good. It's definitely an album you need to be listening to this winter. You could probably listen to it in the spring as well, but 
every song flows seamlessly into the next song. Um, it's very well written. It's well performed. The guest features make sense. It's just, it's nice. It is really nice. The only thing that I don't like about it is the packaging because this bitch was not cheap. This is, you're looking at a $20 jewel case right now, y'all. A $20 jewel case. And this is it. But that being said, when it comes to why I buy K-pop, yes, I do buy for the packaging, but I also love the music. And this was definitely worth the cost when it comes to the music. It is fan flipping tastic. Please try it out. So the album that surprised me this year. Um, there are a few albums that surprised me. For instance, I never thought I'd buy a Shinwa album because I've never bought a Shinwa album before. So that really surprised me. And there are a few other things that I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's cool. Um, I have to give an honorable mention to Super Junior's Replay because I didn't anticipate buying any other Super Junior albums, but Lo Siento was stuck in my mind. And so, yeah, that surprised me quite a bit. I didn't expect a banger like that from Super Junior. But Key's album for Face was the shocking moment of the year for me. I didn't know what to expect coming from Key because Key does whatever he wants and then he asks for forgiveness later. And so I didn't know if this was going to be an EDM album. I didn't know if this was going to be a really quirky pop album. I didn't know if this was going to sound like shiny stuff or this is going to sound totally different. And it's all of those things. Like, oddly enough, it is all of those things. There are songs all in English on here. There are EDM songs. There's dancey songs. There's super poppy songs. There's R&B influenced songs. Like, it's just, wow. It is wow that he managed to put so much stuff on an album, but the album doesn't sound like a bunch of leftover or stray or throwaway shiny tracks. It sounds like stuff that was specially crafted for Key for this album. Also, this is the strongest Key's voice has ever sound. Key, I did not know Key could do some of the things he's done with his voice on this album. The fact that he did a collaboration song with Crush and there are moments on that song where I can't tell who's singing, that sir is high praise so definitely this was the album that surprised me the most this year because i would have bought it regardless like if this had been key singing the alphabet song i would have bought it anyway but the fact that he didn't waste my money or my time kudos to you sir this is a fine album i encourage everyone to get it you have no idea what you're missing if you haven't heard it yet all right so favorite non-korean album released by a k-pop group Initially, I was going to go with Chinese from now on just because like for sentimental reasons and whatnot, but I actually chose Red Velvet's hashtag cookie jar because number one, hashtag cookie jar, what a great debut song to come out with instead of coming to Japan and being like, we're going to give you recycled title songs from Korea because yeah, you guys have never heard this stuff before. Instead, Red Velvet's like, you know what you deserve? You deserve to see what it means to be magical. So let me give you a little magic, a little hashtag cookie jar magic. This song, honestly, if it had Korean lyrics, it could be on any Korean album by Red Velvet. Like it's, it's that good. And I'm so happy about that because sometimes it feels like when groups lately have gone to Japan, it is with their Korean single in bastardized Japanese horribly pronounced, and not a lot of care put into the release. Whereas this sounded like somebody said, okay, we need to make sure that they understand you bitches aren't playing games. You're here to conquer. You're here to slay. You're here to win hearts. And so not only do you get a brand new song, hashtag cookie jar, as the title track for this, but you also get, what, three or four new Japanese songs that are totally not related to anything ever seen on any other Red Velvet project. That's what you do. That is what you do. That's how you debut. And so, yes, this is my favorite non-Korean album released by a K-pop idol because it is the way I feel like every idol should debut in Japan. So, yes, kudos to you, ladies. You did it. You did that. Congratulations. Ooh, 
We're down to the wire. Only two questions left. Can you guess what question is being asked by looking at these two albums? Can you? I bet you can't. These two albums are the answer to the question, album that could have been better. And the reason why these two could have been better, there's a multitude of reasons for one of them and only one reason for the other. So when it comes to Blackpink Square Up, it's a fine album. The music is great. I have no complaints with that. What could have made this album better is if you had put all of the singles that came out before this album on this album. So if you want to hear um, Whistle or if you want to hear um, Boom Ya or if you want to hear any of the five songs that came out before do it do do you can buy them if you want to buy a Japanese album, but you can't buy them in a physical form in Korea. And I just don't understand why. I really don't. No one has explained to me why you would release five fire-ass songs and then be like, mm, that was really nice. They're so nice that we should put that on an album in Japan. But in Korea, let's just give them this mini album and call it a day. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. And that's what would have made that album better is if it had the other five songs that had been released by Blackpink. Now, when it comes to NCT 2018's Empathy, there's only one thing I can say about this that explains why I think this could have been better. Leftovers. That's what this album felt like to me. Like this album felt like leftovers. It felt like all of these different singles and side projects that NCT project, because it's like a bunch of different NCTs are involved in this. This is why it's called NCT 2018. But it feels like they took all of this like leftover random kind of side project stuff and said, Let's make it physical and put it on here. In fact, it's honestly kind of strange. It's like this album is the exact opposite of this album. Whereas Square Up would have been fine adding the other five songs because thematically and audibly, they are very much in the same wheelhouse. This right here was somebody taking all the scraps, putting them together, and nothing matches. Like, there's some songs on here that I love, but... They don't match. They Baby Don't Stop. It's a great song. It's a great song. It don't match the rest of this album. Like, it's just, it's just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's just, the songs on here that I like are Boss, Baby Don't Stop, Touch is just such a fantastic, it's, Touch is a phenomenal song, and it deserves way better than it got being on this album. But, like, Black on Black? Why is this here? Why is this here? And Touch and Black on Black, those aren't two songs that belong on the same album. Fight me if you want to in the comment section. Those aren't songs that belong on the same album. And for that reason alone, this is one of those albums that it could have been better. If somebody just taken some time, at the very least, taken the time to rearrange the track list so that you feel like there's a theme. Even if there is no theme, even if this is a bunch of side project stuff that you're just trying to make happen so that you have some content to release, at the very minimum, you should have listened to all the songs, tried to come up with a track listing that flowed, and then put it out there. But, you know, SM can't be bothered, so it is what it is. But I have to tell you, it could have been better. Like, it had everything it needed to be better. Like I said, Touch is a fantastic song. Baby Don't Stop is a great song. Boss is a great song. These are great songs. It's just not presented in a way that is appealing because there's a lot of fluff and extra shit on here that shouldn't be here. Like, there is no reason why this track listing should have been 13 songs long. It just, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. And you can't make it make sense. Sorry. It just is what it is. So my very last question is um, random album recommendations that were released this year. Um, these are some albums that aren't going to get enough love because there's just not enough people talking about them here on YouTube. Um, nobody's talking about Say's Classic, which I don't know why people aren't talking about it. It is 
one of the best independent albums that came out this year. Say has an amazing voice. Her voice is just as good as Hoodie or Sumin or Sudan. Like it's different. It's definitely an R&B voice, but it's a very young R&B voice. And it's something that I think was missing when it came to the K-Indie lady scene. Because, yes, I love Hoodie's voice. Yes, I love Sudan's voice. Um, And Sumin, that girl right there could sing her ass off. But this girl not only can sing her ass off, but she's giving you dance moves and she's giving you attitude. So please check out her stuff, if for no other reason. If you want to see a good video with somebody really dancing hard, check out her videos. Because her videos are always a great time and she gives amazing live performances. So yes, check out Say's Classic. It's S-A-A-Y, Say Classic, Classic Album. So, so good. Also, Cold with Wave. Cold is a producer, and he's done a lot of work with a lot of your favorite K-hip-hop artists. Like, he did a whole album with Sick K. He is half of Off on Off. Um, He is a great vocalist. He works with everybody because his talent is boundless. And this album is him. It's just him. And that makes it way more special and it makes it way more worth your time and it's just real chill and awesome and no one's talking about it I haven't seen anybody unbox it like it's just it it might as well not even exist because no one's talking about it and so I challenge you to listen to it um Ji Young's Fountain came out at the beginning of the year Ji Young is on Starship Starship has not promoted him at all and honestly I can't blame them for that. And I can't blame them for that because he said some wild, reckless shit at the beginning of the year that made me not even want to get this album. He said that he regrets doing a race with Yolan, which why would you ever? I mean, if I had a regret when it came to that song, if I were him, it would be I regret that Iron was involved with that song because he is a major asshat. But outside of that, a race was a phenomenal song, a great look a strong debut and I don't know why he has shit to say about it but since he's wanting to be and not viewed as an idol and not be pressured to sing and dance for the man he got a really low-key comeback with little to no promotion but just because he said some things that were spicy in my opinion doesn't mean that I should dismiss his talent. And this man has talent in spades. He is someone you need to be watching. If he decides that he doesn't want to do the singing shit no more, songwriting talent is there. There are some very well-written, really chill songs on here. They're worth your attention. Please check them out. On a rainy day, on a dark day, on a wintry evening, that is the album you need to be listening to. And then lastly, Sun and Moon by Sam Kim. Sam Kim is so precious. He's my little Korean Jason Mraz. I just love him to bits and pieces. And he doesn't get talked about either because he's on a really small company. But people in Korea know what's up. He's done some OST work. He goes on television shows. Like, there are people within the scene that definitely pay attention to him. But I wish more international fans paid attention to him because he's from, I want to say, Washington either Washington or Oregon, like he's from the American Northwest. So he's one of us in terms of being an American. So we need to show him a bit more love. And I hope that you guys will because he definitely deserves it. And then what's not on the table that I really want you guys to go back and look at is um, Pinamico just released his solo mini album. Um, So check him out. It's P-E-N-O-M-E-C-O. And he is on a subprint of SM I believe I don't know all I know is that his video was on the SM town YouTube channel so he's got some kind of connection with SM also he did um, an SM station song so please check Penamico out because he sings and he raps and the line between the two is kind of blurred but it's really unique it, it nobody really sounds like him so please check him out also Hyolin I mentioned her earlier she released so many good projects in 2018. Dolly, 
Let's just start there. Dolly. If that doesn't convince you, you need to check out more of what she released. She did Bay and she did Cissé. Like, she just was killing it this year. But there was no physical, so that's why it's not on the table. Otherwise, it would be. But yes, please check her out. And also, even though they're probably not going to do a physical for this, SM Station was really good in 2018. Bacon and Loco had a really good song. Um... Silgi did a song with uh, the girl from G Friend and Chunga, and was it one of the girls from Priston? I cannot recall, but she did a song that was really, really good. Amber did a song for SM Station that was really good. Wendy did a song with John Legend for SM Station that was really good. Like, SM Station had some of my favorite songs of the year. So go back and listen to it. You know, there might be some stuff there that you've forgotten about, or maybe you just didn't check out SM Station because it's not physical, but SM Station has been a highlight of 2018, and it's kind of one of the ones that you don't hear a lot of people talk about because there's nothing to hold in your hand, but it's definitely worth a second listen if you wanted to kind of cap off the year in the right way. So this video has now been 42, 43 minutes long. It's a long time running, but hopefully you weren't bored with me and you found some things on here that you love and if you want to leave your favorites in the comment section below i am more than happy to hear about them if you did a video i will watch your video if you leave the link down below and most importantly have yourself a merry little christmas and i will see you again soon bye y'all